So hello everyone and welcome to this uh, Scientix webinar titled How to become a part of Citizen Science Monitoring System of EduArctic. Uh, my name is Adri Pop and uh, I will moderate this session today. We also have with us today Anna Vigelkopolan, <laughs> sorry if I didn't pronounce it correctly, who is an environmental educator. Uh, she delivers online lessons for the EduArctic pro project and she's the co-author of the Monitoring System Manual for Teachers. So in today's webinar, we will learn about the brand new EduArctic mobile application and the cross-European monitoring network. Uh, during this webinar, you will learn what and how to observe, share photos, let your students submit reports from various locations, compare their results, and win unique prizes. You will also learn how to use the Monitoring System mobile app and how to engage students uh, in observation routines. My colleague Noelle, in, under the Scientix account, she will be helping you with any technical difficulties you might have. So please write her privately if you experience any difficulties in attending this session. At the end of the session, we will have 15 minutes where you can address all your questions uh, to our expert through the chat. But you can uh, post these questions throughout the entire webinar. Um, Okay, so I would like to give the floor now to our presenter, Anna. Hello, welcome. Thank you very much for this uh, presentation. Uh, I hope that after this session, many of you will participate in our monitoring system and will use our monitoring uh, mobile app. Uh, I'll, I'd like to show you it's very uh, easy and can be very useful in your uh, everyday school practice for many uh, topics and for many subjects, actually. So uh, first, uh, I'd like to say a few words about uh, Eduartic project. Uh, I know that I can see that some of you are already uh, participants of this project, so it will be really uh, very, very short. Uh, we, are, uh, mm, uh, we, we are a consortium of, uh, of five countries, uh, Poland, uh, Okay, maybe I'll show this to you. Uh, um, Poland, Faroe Islands, Norway, France, uh, and okay, I forgot someone. Uh, Faroe Far Islands, Poland, France, uh, Norway, and Iceland, of course, Iceland. So some Arctic countries and some non Arctic uh, countries uh, too. And six, we have six institutions and we decided to have a project dedicated to um, polar regions, but not only. We treat this polar and Arctic topic as an uh, only um, an incentive for, for teachers and for students to uh, encourage interest in uh, science, technology, uh, engineering, mathematics, STEM in general. And uh, we we wanted to provide some innovative tools some su to support educational program. Uh, we wanted to be, first of all, accessible to schools, to educators, to students across uh, Europe. So we're using lots of uh, online to tools. Uh, so this is, uh, this is our, uh, our principle. And I think it works because for now we have uh, almost 1,000 participants from several European countries, so uh, it's working uh, quite well. And uh, also we'd like to establish strong links between uh, research and education communities uh, because uh, we find that scientists are also uh, beneficiaries of this program somehow because uh, it's not only for, for teachers and not only for uh, for students, scientists use, use it also as a sort of science communication uh, tool to change approach to, to science, to make it more accessible, and um, also to encourage students to choose scientific path uh, in the future. So I think that Scientix and uh, Eduarctic projects are very, very close uh, in this. Oh, so I, like I said, uh, six partners uh, from five countries to two partners from Poland and many, many participants from Poland, but, but not only. Um, we have lots of participants from Romania, from Spain, uh, from Albania, and so on and so on. So uh, many non-Arctic countries are, are really active and really dedicated to our project. 
and these are the components of our educate, um, educational uh, program. Uh, monitoring system, of course, one of the most uh, important uh, parts and the one that we are uh, talking about uh, today. We also have Polarpedia, it's a, um, an online encyclopedia about Arctic region. It explains uh, polar phenomena, but not only, it's uh, explaining lots of scientific uh, terminology and it's available in several uh, languages. Many of our teachers provide uh, also uh, translations of our terms on voluntary basis uh, and we're really glad, glad, glad it's uh, so popular. Uh, we also had direct educator training sessions. Uh, online lessons are the core of our, uh, of our project. These are virtual classes with various scientists and not only scientists, with people uh, who are uh, working in the north, who are polar researchers. We also have transmissions directly from polar stations, from Polish polar stations, from Norway, from Far Faroe Islands, and Arctic competitions. We have just completed the second edition of, uh, of competition, which, uh, was, which, which was a great success. Um, we had uh, uh, more than 150 um, applications and with innovative and research project projects. Uh, the rule was that uh, that each team consisting of one student and one uh, teacher could uh, um, propose uh, a project related to Arctic research. And uh, after uh, several stages, uh, we uh, we chose six winning teams. Uh, they are from uh, Spain, Greece, Poland, uh, and uh, and yeah, they are. I see greetings from some of the teachers I, I recognize from from lessons, so that's why I'm looking at this. Uh, well, this was the second uh, edition, and but we are actually trying to make our project a little longer, and we keep fingers crossed so that we can organize a third. Uh, edition. Well, it's not that sure yet, but uh, if it uh, if European Commission accepts it, then we will be able to uh, organize those trips for uh, following um, teams. And we know that it is very encouraging for students. Uh, they are very eager to participate in such uh, activities. But enough about other uh, activities. Monitoring system is what we are. Uh, talking about uh, today. Uh, what is an Arctic monitoring system uh, from the very beginning? Uh, the idea was that schools can take part in a citizen uh, science in, in general, that they will observe uh, their surrounding, their environment around the school, make observations and uh, collect uh, data and teachers may use and compare uh, data uh, afterwards uh, from from whole Europe and not only Europe actually we have some uh, participants from, from US from uh, from Asia from Brazil too so and uh, Venezuela I think so uh, really uh, it is really diversified and uh, so this is this was the basic idea but the idea initial idea was that uh, teachers provide uh, measurements uh, directly on our portal on behalf of students. And, and, but the students are the ones who are collecting data, who are responsible for uh, checking, the, for example, temperature uh, in, at one point, etc. And uh, the idea was also to, um, uh, to create some sort of uh, Mm, uh, routine, a sense of routine, a scientific routine that is necessary to conduct scientific research in, uh, in, in future. So remember, we're trying to encourage students to follow scientific path, uh, career path. So this, this was the routine, this was the, uh, also the joy of observation. So um, the idea was that and uh, it was performed via portal. So data uploaded to Eduarctic web portal and available to all participating schools and even uh, not uh, participating for, observ for observation. 
Uh, but then uh, during actually during uh, our uh, workshops, direct meetings with teachers uh, participating in Edwardic project, uh, we um, were collecting some feed feedback and the uh, major uh, um, they, the majority of them said that it would be great to engage students more directly. They are participating in online lesson, but it's actually not enough. They should be able to participate more uh, directly. So we figured out if we could use a mobile monitoring system for that. And this is how we decided to create this mobile app. Uh, it uh, now it's uh, actually uh, ready to, to use for all the participants because it's available in two shops. But uh, at first it was prepared for our uh, Edwardic teachers and um, available for downloading from the portal starting from February 2018. Uh, for those of you who are not yet registered at the Arctic uh, teachers, this is um, this is how to participate. It's really easy. Uh, registration is still open, so you just need to uh, log in. Yeah, I, I can see more heterotic teachers. Hello. <laughs> uh, so if you're not uh, our, our participant yet, it's really easy to. Uh, to, to to do that and I think it's worth it we have lots of lots of uh, online lessons uh, ahead and other activities uh, and possibly and hopefully another third edition of uh, the competition so uh, I think it's wor really worth it so you give some data uh, mostly of your school and you you're, uh, you can log in register and you are uh, you have all the tools available of course for free to uh, for you so uh, again what why did we decide to uh, to prepare this uh, this mobile uh, app first of all like i said teachers uh, said that they could use something that is engaging students more directly also, it facilitates the process of submission of measurement. You don't need to uh, don't need your computer, and most of us have mobile phone, phones, uh, smartphones that we use for various purposes, and it's very user friendly. What I'd like to, I think, uh, uh, we can uh, uh, try it right now, if, if you wish. Uh, also, we wanted it to be more interesting and more attractive, so this app allows to add photos from your observations, from your locations, and we already have some of them, and I think that it's a very interesting part. We take photos all the time, and uh, it's good to share them with a wider uh, audience. And uh, as um, we have teachers from various regions, it is interesting to compare how the nature, how the spring comes uh, and when spring comes in different in different regions. And that was also the idea to compare the uh, phenophases and how climate change and also how sea ice extent uh, are, are connected and how, are, how they uh, influence uh, our um, our everyday weather, our phenophases, our how um, uh, how how nature behaves in general. Also, it provides uh, us measurements from various locations because normally, um, in, normally you ha you enter data of your school as a participant, and it was uh, showing data from one location from school, but. Uh, each student lives in a different place and also we wanted them not to forget about the project during summer vacations, whenever, uh, wherever they are, uh, ha no matter how far they go, we, they can provide their uh, measurements as well, even from most exotic northern or southern uh, locations. So this whole idea contributes to enlarging citizen science uh, network. And uh, this was uh, another reason for creating this this whole whole thing. And the idea was that we want to be part of this citizen science. I, it is 
it has always been pop always well it has been uh, popular for a long time but now it's getting really really popular and also european commission is um beginning to look at citizen science as something of value uh, in general uh, it refers to data collection and interpretation but mm, by people who are not yet uh, or not scientists or not professionals and rather enthusiasts and this is actually the only difference between the two lack of formal formal training uh, and but the years of experience but actually some of the enthusiasts ha have years of experience in bird watching for example so uh, i think that citizen scientists have at least um, the, the same amount of of enthusiasm or uh, passion as trained uh, scientists, if not more, in many cases. And uh, also, the, we, uh, we see that the number of citizen scientists has only grown with the increasing applications uh, of uh, internet and of mobile uh, technologies. So this is what we like to uh, use uh, as well. Um, so I lost my... Okay, so I think that was seen twice. So uh, again, for those who are not yet familiar with a uh, monitoring system, uh, here, here is a short summary of rules of participation. So um, in general, you should be a registered Eduardi teacher. And that now I'm not talking about mobile uh, version, but about the version that is dedicated to teachers that is uh, available via portal. Uh, but other users, especially Eduarctic students, uh, may use the app and also be part of the network. Uh, the, the most important thing is to report on a regular basis, like I said, this routine. And we give data once a week on Monday. You also, if you forget this, uh, even though we are providing some uh, notifications and uh, to, to remind you, uh, at least via app, on Tuesday, you can also give your measurements by the latest, but uh, to make it um, reliable and, um, and possible to compare, you use your Monday data. And uh, you give actual values for uh, 12 p.m. noon of Monday local time. Local time is the important thing. And one user can provide one report per week from this one location or any location. Uh, of course, there are not only actual values like temperature, I'm going to show you that in a minute, but there are also other elements like biotic elements. And there are various species that you uh, that you market if, they are, if you record them. If they are not uh, available or observed in your surroundings, leave the box empty. Uh, it, it's not a problem. You can still provide measurements. Actually, the, uh, um, the species that are observed were uh, firstly more like northern species. So then we began to worry that lots of our great participants from southern regions of, uh, of Europe are not available, to, uh, are not able to uh, observe them. So we added, actually added some uh, species that uh, both of, uh, uh, yeah, the, they were, we added dandelion. And we added black alder that can be easily observed uh, also in the southern regions of Europe. Uh, so, uh, of course, we're trying to reward you for your being remaining active and for uh, sticking to your routine. So, teachers receive uh, edu points. Uh, edu points are something that we that our participants collect in our positive rivalry like edu game and we have the best teacher the best country and the best school in the project it's all available on our portal so uh, I, I can see that many 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 teachers are really keen on gaining those points and this is great uh, so uh, for, for the registration the teacher gets 50 points and then 10 points per week of course if the uh, measurements are uh, provided so only for regular and active uh, participation uh, so uh, as you can see here there are two categories of rewards like 
uh, edu points in edu game and edu coins. So uh, we know that uh, students need some positive incentive um, to engage in something usually. Uh, so we decided to uh, introduce another category. Uh, it's edu coins. So uh, each uh, non -te no teacher, uh, that means for example, as your student will uh, receive five points, up to five points actually per measurement. So they, if they uh, submit only a measurement, they get two points and they, as they can add up to three photos and they receive one point for each photo, so they can receive two plus five, uh, up to five points for one uh, measurement. Uh, how to start? Uh, you need to go to our portal, that is one, uh, one version, and of course if you choose to go to our portal, you can also see the map with the results of, of the measurements. What you, you can do is uh, check the ac uh, actual results uh, of, of the week, and uh, if you use this um, these buttons, you can check previous previous weeks and results for uh, measurements from whole Europe. Also, you can see a gallery of photos with it, if some um, participant provided photos with their uh, measurement. Uh, what you can see here is three uh, categories of. Um, of measurements, if you can say so. Uh, so uh, teachers' measurements, that means registered teachers' measurements are marked in blue, and other measure measurements are marked in gray. Other measurements, that means also those uh, provided by, by students. And we decided to make this, uh, make, uh, mark them in, in different colors because uh, we know that our teachers are reliable, but uh, we also know that once the uh, the app is um, uh, is available for general public, we can meet some strange ideas or uh, measurements that are not true. So we decided to uh, to show it this way. And uh, this uh, and your measurements are actually. Um, marked in red. Uh, so you can see here this button, get the mobile app, so this is one way to download it, and also uh, the app is available for, uh, in, uh, for Android and for iOS, so for two most popular uh, systems in uh, shops that means Android, so uh, Google Play and Apple Store for uh, iOS. Uh, so once you log in, of course you can even do it right now. It is downloading really fast. It doesn't take lots of space from your smartphone, so you can actually do it live if you don't have it uh, yet. So what happens when you log in? This is our logo. And these are two versions of uh, welcome screen. Uh, so as you can see here, there, are edu or there is a button for Eduactive users and other accounts. So uh, if you're an, a registered Eduactive users user, you choose this one and you log in with your data, with your login, with your passport from from the project. And so your points are added and your measurements are uh, registered. So this is uh, for teachers and other accounts, and uh, we are counting on you to promote it amongst your students. Uh, for other accounts, you choose a login and a password. We don't collect any data from the students, uh, from minors. We, we don't want to do that. So anyone can choose any uh, login, any nickname they, they, they want, and any password that is not um, stored anywhere, and just uh, Continue their measurement. It's good, so it's good to remember the password in case we get logged out of the uh, of the app. It doesn't. No, normally we stay uh, we stay logged in, but in case if we are uh, logged out, it's good to remember the password, not to lose the points. And we'll get to the points and coins actually 
uh, how important they are. So there, uh, after we log in, we have the main screen view in two versions again. On the left, you can see uh, teacher version, and on the right, you can see student version. And as you can see, uh, um, student version is richer, actually. It has additional uh, possibilities. So uh, you have new measurements to add your measurements. You have a map, the same map as you can see on the portal to observe your measurement uh, at once and other measurements as well. So it gives you the same functionality. And you can see the list of your measurements if you cl click here. And then photos, my photos, if you decide to add any, both teachers and students can add photos and they're really, really great from various um, and very different regions. And here we have uh, students version and we have two additional buttons. There is but uh, my EduCoins button and prize list. And this is another incentive that we are proposing to our, uh, to our students but we'll get to that. Just to, uh, remind, just to show you how, how to add data, it's really, really uh, simple. So we have uh, a set of uh, parameters. First, there are so-called actual values. So we give values observed when we uh, add uh, the measurement. So the temperature, the type, uh, the, the, sorry, the cloud cover, and uh, atmospheric uh, pre precipitation, um, if there is any, and type of uh, uh, precipitation, and also uh, wind uh, force and visibility. If visibility is 100%, uh, if there is mist, of, or there is fog. One thing, when you're adding uh, our air temperature, uh, you can also, of course, we're not uh, expecting uh, any minus uh, temperature uh, in the near future, at, at least in, uh, in our region, let's say. Uh, but uh, you can also, of course, uh, in winter, you can add uh, minus temperature using this, uh, this, this button. Uh, so here uh, you can see um, the uh, types of uh, the values and what you see on the left is the version on mobile uh, phone and what you see on the right uh, is um, data that you, that you uh, enter on the portal. It's exactly the same but mobile version is, is of course um, much more compact you might say. Uh, so, if you where do you find uh, your measurements? Uh, in two places, of course. In uh, each um, observation is registered in my measurement section, so you can see. Well, this participant hasn't been very active. Only two measurements. Of course, it's just a test account um, from February, and of course, uh, your uh, measurement will appear on the map both app and both in, in portal and your uh, measurement is always uh, marked in red. You can see those numbers here like mm, the circle with 10 or 17 on two measurements that means that uh, we are uh, in a quite close location there were several uh, measurements but when you click on them they sh uh, each one of them uh, is shown uh, separately. Of course, uh, you can uh, get closer and choose a particular region so you don't have to look at the whole Europe or Africa. You can concentrate uh, on your country, for example, and compare results from different, uh, the different parts of your country, for example, and use it in your geography classes uh, or, or math classes. Uh, what I'd like to uh, show you uh, is that sometimes it's not so obvious to tell if, um, if what, for example, what kind of precipitation we observe, or um, if, if, if it's a mist, or, or is it a fog, or is it smog, what is it that we are actually observing? Well, temperature uh, is uh, quite easy. 
but for example wind force it's not so um, uh, not so obvious to track and to choose one option so this is where uh, we come with a little help we prepared a manual for teachers with, with lots of illustrations with lots of hot tips how to observe also how to uh, observe certain species etc etc but it's um, we, we heard that from our teachers yes it is interesting but it is too long for our students to use uh, we get that it's a uh, good for um, it's good for um, teachers to prepare for lessons. Uh, I think there are lots of um, facts that are not so obvious, and not so uh, not so um, how to say not so well known to everyone. So it's good to get there. It's not that long, but we understand that students might find it all too too long. So this is why we decided to use this manual and implement it in the app to make it uh, more accessible. So, oh yeah, uh, once again, how you see your uh, measurement uh, on the map. Uh, once you observe something uh, you, and you uh, click on the measurement, you can see uh, the results, if there was any ice cover, blah, 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 snow cover, uh, and also those photos that I was talking uh, about. You can enlarge uh, any image, of course, but this is a small gallery from a particular day and a particular place, so this is also very uh, interesting. And um, actually, uh, uh, we know that uh, children are children and might have um let's say controversial ideas so to make it 100 percent safe uh we uh we are um, accepting each student's photo before it's published uh, we don't want any for example any human images to be uh, to be published because of the uh um, protection of, of rights and we don't, don't want to collect all the uh, consents of, of people in photos so we just um, uh, we just accept every photo before it appears and before points are added but you can see on the map that there are quite many of them and they're really really good quality well this is actually me but it was me last year uh, early spring and uh, catkins, birch uh, catkins that I uh, th that I observed, and actually it was before we even were thinking seriously about making this app. But th this was my uh, thought that it would be great to share this kind of photo. Yes, we already have uh, catkins uh, in in Poland in in Poland in Warsaw. How about you? So this was my idea to uh, to share it. Uh, like I said, actual uh, values are one thing, but we also observing um, plants and uh, animals. As for plants, we uh, we chose some phenophases like open buds, starting to flower, ribbon berries or red disease, depending on the plant, uh, coloring of leaves, that means started coloring, and uh, falling down of the leaves and all leaves falling down and we also have a set of plants that are quite easy to recognize quite easy to spot and quite um quite popular so uh, it's not hard to find them also now like i said we added black alder and we added dandelions so uh it's also possible to add some some data not only from northern or uh, central europe but also from uh, southern europe so we have bird we have lilac rowan and um, black alder uh bilberry uh, and dandelion and rosebay willow herb R rosebay willow herb is quite specific but uh, and quite more northern, but you can also know it as fireweed uh, with beautiful purple flowers. So uh, you don't, don't need to worry which phenophase is uh, correct for which plant, it's all right automatic. Uh, so um, uh, it's, uh, you, you have a set of parameters for each, uh, for each plant, so it's uh, quite user-friendly, we believe. And uh, also, 
um, I mentioned this manual. So these are fragments of the manual and uh, in your app there is uh, next to each parameter uh, there is um, a question mark in a blue field. So once you uh, click or press this uh, question mark in a blue field, the, uh, the relevant part of manual appears. So you don't need to uh, read the whole thing, but you're, if you're wondering, well, uh, if it's uh, if there there are open buds already, or is it already this bud of, for example, uh, lilac? Let me check, and then you just have it available in your phone with a photo, with explanation how it should look like, how it should smell like. Uh, sometimes, so um. Uh, it's it's quite useful, I believe, and allows you and our students to decide in the field if this is it. I can take a photo and, and check if this is this is uh, lilac with open buds uh, or maybe uh, or maybe something else. And yes, the prizes. Uh, we uh, we figured out that positive rivalry is great for students. So uh, there is rivalry on many levels. So the, you can observe here my educoins points that a uh, particular participant uh, has obtained. Uh, and you can see the difference between my educoins and current educoins because my educoins are coins that I ever uh, I have um, gained, I have obtained uh, during the whole cycle of me using an app and current educoins. And current coins are coins, my coins minus coins I used for prizes. Because yes, there are prizes. First, there's a leaderboard, and you can check your position. Um, we don't use uh, students' names, but if you have a whole class, you can give them particular nicknames and recognize uh, their uh, their measurement this way. So there's a leaderboard, but um, also, uh, there is a prize list, and you can no, student can choose a prize. Uh, there are two types of prizes, uh, and uh, they differ in their value. That means how much, how many measurements, how much edu point you need to gain to be able to get the prize. So the cheapest ones are our photos available as uh, phone wallpapers. Uh, and then uh, there are also material, I don't want to say real, but yeah, real prizes like jigsaws, 3D jigsaws, uh, albums, uh, backpacks, magnets, and so on and so on. These are very uh, special items because they're not available in any shop. They're uh, polar related and they're project related and they're really uh, really uh, unique. So uh, I think it should encourage them to not only to find themselves on this leaderboard, but also to get some prizes and they can decide if they want to this album. So they need to gain uh, lots of uh, edu coins and this is all available and uh, for them in the, uh, in the app. And one more thing that I find particularly uh, interesting and useful because how can you apply uh, this monitoring system, monitoring app and monitoring system, this knowledge that they gain in your classroom? One thing is this routine, this uh, getting used to observation, this learning phenophases and, and the consequences, etc. etc. But um, another thing is. Uh, gamification of your classroom and this is a topic that I'm really interested uh, in and there are actually two things uh, I'd like to uh, I'd like to show you um, yeah uh, because uh, remember I me remember I mentioned we have Polarpedia uh, website Polarpedia uh, online encyclopedia dedicated to polar terms and there are lots of terms uh, also related to our uh, online lessons, but not only explaining polar phenomena, etc. But recently, we also added another category, and the category is uh, games and quizzes. And we're trying to add 
as much as possible. That means uh, Kahoot quizzes that I think you're familiar with, uh, and use all the tools that are actually available uh, on the internet. But some some teachers uh, just don't want to waste time on uh, preparing them, or just really don't have time to prepare um, those activities on every topic. So we decided to prepare it for you. And using our online lesson and using our Polarpedia terms, we prepared really a lot of activities like this ready for, ready for you to use. And monitoring system has also been an inspiration to prepare for now two big, well, two games uh, that I think are really ready uh, to use too. One of them is actually uh, available in Italian. I can see some participants uh, from Italy uh, because we have also some activities, some worksheets in Italian. Uh, and this is, uh, let's say, not I don't want to say less interesting one because it's very interesting, but a very um, joyful and playful game. It's uh, like arcade game, arcade Pac-Man game uh, with monitoring system uh, questions. So it's uh, quite fun, maybe also for younger students, but like I said, for now it's available in, uh, in Italian. Maybe we'll provide other versions too. But I'd like to, you, to encourage you to use this board game we prepared. The board game is called Master of Citizen Science. And if you use this um, Manual, this observations, uh, either from uh, Polar, uh, sorry, either from mobile app or from the uh, from the website from our portal, you can use uh, this game, and I think it's uh, quite fun and uh, educational. It doesn't take much time in the classroom, doesn't require too much materials. Well, you need to print some things, but uh, it it shouldn't be uh, very very difficult. So these are the links. Uh, to the Polarpedia, but they are also easy to find in games and quizzes section because they're divided into uh, into sections and the board game Ma uh, Master of Citizen Science is in a miscellanea uh, section. So uh, also you can use our browser to find it. So uh, I don't want to explain the whole game to you right now. Uh, I hope it's quite self-explanatory because we have instructions, we have rules, we have answers, uh, everything is uh, ready for downloading on our Polarpedia, just to show you how it works and how it's connected with, the, uh, with our uh, monitoring system and citizen science in general. So we have a set of cards. Actually, we have um, four sets of cards. We have uh, metal, we have uh, plants, we have uh, insects, and we have uh, birds. Four sets of cards. In each set, we have nine uh, cards, and uh, each card is a question, let's say. So you, you need to print those cards, also mark them on the back side with a marker. Uh, in a certain color that it is all explained there. So we have those questions uh, based on observations and based on our manual. So you print those. There is also a ready, uh, ready to use, ready to print um, board game, uh, board in general. So the idea is that not to take too much time like 15 to up to 20 minutes for game uh, with two up to three, four persons uh, playing. So uh, it's quite easy with some twists. So uh, of course the general idea is to answer the questions uh, that are drawn from, from particular uh, groups and uh, the group depends on the color on which you land uh, this is, uh, I think, quite quite self-explanatory. So you roll the dice, land on, on a field, and uh, draw uh, one card from uh, from those four types. And uh, then the student, the participant, has 30 seconds uh, for an, uh, for uh, 
um, for answer and uh, it's uh, allowed to move forward or move backward if uh, he she doesn't give a good answer and they it's also explained here that for example here we have a field with number one that means that if he or she gives a good answer it goes one field forward or a bad answer one field back not to make it too dull and too uh, easy also there are some special fields with arrows it just uh, it's it's a better quality actually in actual boards so don't don't worry just to show you how it uh, works in general so uh there are special fields uh arrows a special field with those stars uh, marked in, uh, with special rules that are explained uh, explained here and give a, an additional twist to the game so uh, I think it's all available uh, for downloading. I think it's self-explanatory. If you have any uh, remarks, uh, I would like you to test it. Uh, if you want to, so you think that something should be changed, we're open to your suggestions or maybe add it. Please, uh, please, you should uh, always feel free to do uh, to do that. Also, if you're a registered um, Adriatic teacher, you can use our forum to share your thoughts. We have a special uh, section dedicated to mobile app the monitoring system. It's one thing you can share our thoughts or comments or suggestions here. Uh, you can see it works because, because thanks to your suggestions, we decided to do additional things to perform additional activities in the project. So you're actually shaping the project. It's not that it's set in the beginning and we're not listening to you and doing whatever we planned no we are uh, we are trying to li listen to your suggestions and shape it the way uh, uh the, the way you you want i can see some questions but i will i've been promised that i will get them all in the end uh, i can also follow them later in, in chat so i'm not uh, uh, forgetting them so uh this is how it works oh, also we have uh, other dedicated sections like larpedia where we can share your thoughts about our terms about what we should add maybe what we should change about the games of course we're really looking forward to your feedback on this section we are actually pretty proud of uh, but you can also always get better and better and uh, your feedback is the most valuable thing uh, in this. So uh, you can, I hope you're, you're already downloading this uh, app. You can download it either from the portal or from those stores for Android, Google Play and uh, iOS App Store uh, anytime you want and begin uh, this um, and begin this, this part. So uh, thank you very much. Wow, almost for uh, almost the time set. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, I can see that there are quite a lot of questions. Okay, thank you, Anna, for the presentation. Yeah, it was very very interesting, and we did receive some questions throughout the presentation, which I collected for you. Yeah. Um, uh, first, let me tell the participants that uh, um, if they would like to receive a certificate uh, for attending this webinar, then please um, fill in the feedback survey, which will be uh, a link will be provided um, in the chat. And only participants who attended the webinar and filled in this survey will be able to receive the certificate. Um, and now to the questions. So we had quite a lot of questions concerning uh, primary education. We, I think we have some primary uh, school teachers here with us, and they were wondering how you can engage primary school students and how you can use um, these activities in the classroom. OK, so um, in general, the, um, uh, the, uh, the project was planned for uh, students from 13 to 19 years old. Uh, and that depends on the, your system. Uh, now in Poland, for example, if, if there are students from primary schools that are uh, also 13 or 14 or 15 uh, years old, 13 or 14 uh, mostly. So um, 
you can you can register it's not uh, of course there are some lessons that uh, are marked as let's say easier level um, if if english language is not a barrier for them i mean if they're not na native speakers we have some lessons that can be uh, useful for 11 years old uh, as well some are set needs uh, needs some more background and some more knowledge uh, to, to understand them fully but for example there is a lesson about um, arctic fun facts and this is maybe not very scientific uh, at first but it's quite interesting drawing attention i think that uh, 12 years old and 11 year olds uh, can can participate freely uh, another one is weirdest arctic, uh, arctic animals another one is dedicated to tardigrades but on a very basic level so we have different levels and i encourage you to to register you can choose some lessons that are adapted to uh, to um, current level of, of, of students. You can also use the games, and um, I think it's uh, it's it's great to also for for primary schools. Maybe not for um, very like young children. I saw some question about kindergarten. I we don't have too many activities actually adapted to uh, very young uh, children, but. You can also use it as an inspiration. You can choose some of our games and adapt it for a lower uh, lower level. Uh, like we are preparing now for some uh, presentations, and uh, we have this game that is bingo, stem bingo, polar bingo on our uh, Polarpedia, and I adapted it for six to nine year olds uh, lately with pictures, with photos of. Uh, of animals so uh, I can also uh, put it on games and quizzes and um, there it's per perfectly adapted for uh, for those younger children so yes primary schools are invited to you have to just choose uh, and you, if you need any help with choosing uh, lessons or you have any requests just contact us and we'll prepare something for you that's great to hear thank you very much there was a question about how you can involve parents in these activities. How can a teacher make parents collaborate with the students and with the teacher? I think that mobile app is a great opportunity, actually, because online lessons are usually during school hours. So mostly um, parents will not be able to participate, but there are, there are recordings, but actually it's not the same thing as actually participating. But uh, I think that mobile app and using it uh, as a sort of a challenge with uh, parents uh, is great. Parents can also, because now that um, app is available in stores, anyone can download it. And it can be a sort of a, a little competition between in families uh, in uh, who provides um, measurements more regularly. And uh, when you go to uh, for, for a walk, you can check if oh look, it's uh, uh, Bilberry has already flowers. So and uh, I think that this is a way of engaging parents to, of course, and it involves like outdoor activities uh, in this case. But I see, see this app as an opportunity to do that uh, as well. So uh, officially, we're not engaging uh, parents, but. Mm -hmm. With mobile app. Yes, but there are some great opportunities with the mobile app. I, yeah, I see. Um, the last question that we received was concerning, um, do students have to create their own accounts for the mobile uh, app? That dip, uh, for the mobile app, uh, yes. Uh, each participant, uh, but it, um, there are two separate things. One thing is registering for the project, and this is what only teacher can do. But in this mobile app, each participant has a separate uh, account without uh, giving uh, a separate account for a separate uh, device, uh, without giving personal data. We do not require that and we do not collect that. So you can be like flower one participant with any uh, password that you, that you wish to uh, use. And this, each student has a, a separate account. This way, they can collect EduCoins and win those prizes individually. 
and this is how it goes when we want uh, when some uh, I should um, ha uh, highlight that uh, if there, um, we can send as we do not collect any personal data from um, from minors from children uh, only uh, students that have a particular teacher registered can receive a prize uh, receive a prize that is a material prize, like a backpack, because we need the address to send it somewhere. So it would be advice for you to encourage uh, students, because th this was the primary goal to engage students, your students. And then uh, the prize is sent, uh, any prize other than wallpaper for uh, the mobile uh, phone is sent to a school address. So this is how we avoid collecting personal data and demanding some extra personal data. Great, thank you for the answer. I think everyone's answers have been uh, provided now. Thank you for that. And let's see if there are any further questions. Uh, now is your time to ask them. <laughs> so Adriana says, uh, I have some ideas how to relate EduArctic with some topics in maths. Um, and in, she would like to hear some more ideas. Is there a platform where you can see other people's ideas, uh, if they have any ideas on how to relate uh, topics, for example, like she proposes with mathematics and uh, percentages. You mean like using uh, those results in your classroom? Yes. Is, are there any, is there a platform where you can... Uh, this, uh, this, forum, this forum is this platform and uh, also um, you can all contribute to Polarpedia and also to Polarpedia in games and quizzes section. If you have an idea how to use, how you use a monitoring system, for example, in math classes, and you, you have your worksheet in any language that you have it in, just send it to us, it will be uh, published with credits, of course, if you agree to uh, have it uh, shown. Uh, so, and edu points, of course, for, uh, uh, for um, registered teachers. So yes, you can share your ideas also in Polarpedia. It's open also for, uh, for teachers. It's not only for us. For now, we only started not long ago with this section. So it's mostly prepared for our scientists, our educators, but uh, please share your ideas as well. Okay, that's a great advice for all the participants. You can go ahead, Adriana, and uh, contribute with your idea. Yeah. Um, if there are no further questions, then I would like to thank you very much for this presentation and for everyone for attending. And again, if you, if, uh, you as a participant would like to receive a certificate, then you can um, um, fill in the feedback survey that has been sent on the chat. By Noel, and you will receive your certificate if you have attended the webinar and you filled out this feedback survey. So thank you again, Anna, and um, hope to hear much. about Edu Arctic uh, more more in the future. Thank you, everyone. I hope, so. I hope to see lots of you during online lessons. <laughs> exactly. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you.